Welcome Praise Chapel Revival Oxnard and to all our Praise Chapel family. We want to thank you for, for watching and listening today and also for the listeners that are for the first time. We want to just welcome you. We want to just uh, bless you with this word that God has put in my heart to deliver. And, I, and we want to welcome you on this Palm Sunday, on this triumphal entry. And we want to thank you again for for joining us with us and, and, and coming in prayer with us. We, we want to thank those that, that have uh, been steadfast in their prayer and, and with their giving. And wanna, I want to reach out and I want to thank you. And, 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 and may God bless you abundantly and continue to meet all your needs. Uh, and also those that are watching on YouTube, uh, God bless you. And may God continue to, to bring you increase and, and cover your family. And with that said, I want, I want us to open up our Bibles to the book of Mark, the book of Mark, chapter 11. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 11. And again, this is Palm Sunday. And I want to be ministering about the triumphal entry. Hallelujah. Mark 11, we're going to begin reading in verse 1. Now when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village opposite of you, and as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has set. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside the street, and they loosed it. But some of them who stood there said to him, why are you doing this? Why are you loosening the colt? And they spoke to him as Jesus had commanded them, so they let them go. Verse 7 says, Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it. And he sat on it, and many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before him and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David, that comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Verse 11 says, And Jesus went up to Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all the things, at the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Father, for this opportunity, this time, Lord, to, to spread your word, God, to reach those that are lost, Father. We pray, God, right now that... We thank you, Father, for the equipping of the saints, Lord, that you have called us, God, into this ministry, God, to, to win, build, and send, God, and to, to continue, God, to, to spread the words that what others may know, Lord, that they be set free, Father. We just thank you in this for this special day, for this precious day, for this special occasion, Lord, that you have blessed us with, that you have allowed us God, to partake, Father. Everything you've done for us, God, we, we thank you, Father. And for that, we give you all the praise and all the glory is yours. And all the saints of God say, Amen and Amen. So while for thousands of years, the, the Israelites, the children of God, the chosen people of God, were expecting a Messiah and the King of Israel. This goes all the way back to 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 7. The people came to Samuel, the prophet of God, saying that they wanted a king. They wanted a king because Samuel was old and his sons were not following or walking according to the things of God, which also confirms that even though men of God or the people of God may walk a, a straight and narrow path, doesn't always confirm that your children are going to follow. But Samuel was heartbroken because his mind... that. Was, was made up, he already assumed that they had a king, that the King Jesus was their king, that God was their king. But they didn't agree with Samuel. Samuel went out to, to God with his pain, as we know from the scriptures, because the people rejected God as king. And God told, no, Samuel, they didn't reject you. They rejected me. And Samuel tried to reason with the people in 1 Samuel chapter 8, Verses 10 through 19, you can read that. He tells them, look, if you get a king, he's going to reign over you. If you get a king, he's going to reign over your sons and he's going to put them to war with the chariots and the horses. 
if you, if you get a king, he's going to reign over your daughters. If you get a king, he's going to take all the tithe of what you earned. But the people demanded, Samuel, we want a king. And God said to Samuel, hearken to the people. Listen to the people. Give them what they want. You see, sometimes God gives us what we want. It might not be the best thing for us, but when we ask it, we might think that's what is the best thing for us. But what I'm talking about is God gave them their first king, and his name was Saul. And Samuel anointed Saul. Saul started off good. Saul was a great king. He was anointed. He was gifted. A matter of fact, in 1 Samuel chapter 10, says that he went to the hill of the prophets of Gilgal. And he joined among them. And they saw Saul coming down amongst them. The Bible says that Saul was a changed man. That God had touched his heart. That he had gotten favor from the Lord. But all the while, Saul became jealous and envious. God said, Saul is not really a man after my own heart. I have another king that I'm after. Saul disobeyed God on several occasions. Saul stepped off or Saul stepped out of his role. You see, when we step out of the role that God has given us, that's where we get ourselves in trouble. When we step out of the uh, out of being obedient to what God has called us with, is that's where we're going to find ourselves in a whole lot of danger. He was not a priest. Saul was the king. And God saw what Saul did. And so his kingdom would be divided from him. And here comes David. Everybody loves David. David is the psalmist. David is a, is a warrior. David is a, is a, is a poet. And David also harmonized the nations. There was, there was division. David was a great leader. David made mistakes, but people still held him in, in high regard because the, the nation was at best when David reigned. But David died and turned it over to his son Solomon. Solomon had many wives. Solomon had over 700 wives, the Bible says, not counting hundreds of concubines. Solomon had some major issues. And the kingdom had passed down from king after king after king. Then we come to the place where God says, kings did what was right in their own eyes. But the people always longed for a Messiah. The prophets prophesied that he would come. But it seemed like it was long coming. Like even now, we, we tell people that Jesus is coming back and and the response that we get from many people says it we've been hearing that or it's been written or we've been hearing people been hearing about that thousands of years but we know that our lord is long suffering but they looked for the restoration of israel they looked for that king that was similar to david but in fact they really never got over king david they kept talking about the kingdom of david and that one day, God was going to restore all Israel. He would restore Israel under a new king that would be the Messiah. And God sent Jesus. The problem with Jesus was he did not meet the Jewish expectation of the Messiah. They were looking for a military leader. They were looking for someone with, with, with weapons, with, with swords, and, and with shields. They were looking for a militant leader. But they had no idea that he would come as a carpenter. He was a preacher. And he did not meet the expectations of the Jews. But by the time we get to our text in verse 11 of the Gospel of Mark, what we find that Jesus is there trying to make them understand that in fact he is the Messiah sent from God. Jesus is no longer holding back his identity, he sends his disciples out to get a colt and they bring the colt back to him. But he gives them this or these instructions. Who hasn't heard about the triumphal, about Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey? 
And that's where I want to minister today uh, on our text from, uh, uh, from uh, Palm Sunday. But today I want to see that if we can pull some things out of the text today and see how we can apply those in our life today so that we may be able to make some adjustment to our lives for the glory of God. And that's what I want to minister on today. God is still giving revelation that is beneficial to us today. Jesus sent two disciples. And to be a disciple, you must be willing to obey orders without understanding the occasion. Jesus said to them in Mark chapter 2, or in Mark 11 verse 2, go get me a donkey. They had no clue what was going on. He said, go get me a donkey. And he told them exactly where to go. And they didn't understand the occasion. They did not understand it. They didn't understand what, why Jesus needed this. But they obeyed the orders anyway without understanding the occasion. He said, go and get a donkey and bring it here to me. Now, Jesus understood the occasion, but the disciples didn't. They had no understanding, no, no insight, yet they were obedient to God. People of God, every day you live is a special occasion, an opportunity for God to, to bless us, an opportunity to show our love for God. Every day that God blesses us is a special occasion. What God expects from us as the disciples, we are to be obedient to his word every day, on every occasion. We live or we should live like it's a special occasion. We should live like it's a privilege. The Bible says that we're but a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. I remember uh, one of my friends uh, back growing up uh, that his mom, she she had a, a china that she kept in, in a china hutch. And she would use that china on special occasions, on, on Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, etc., or or when they had guests coming over. But as she got older, my friend would tell me she she used that china more and more. And and he asked his mom, Mom, why are you using this more and more uh, and more regularly? And and what she said is, son, you know what every day that God has blessed us with is a special occasion. And sometimes we gotta get that in our spirit. We're holding back when God wants us to bring our very best every day to obey orders. Even when we don't understand the occasion, Jesus said, go and get me a colt that is tied up. How many of us are tied up in different things? You cannot be free and tied to something. When you're tied to something or, or, or other people it distracts us from the purpose and the plan of God. Yes, God can use a donkey even to bring a, a, a message to, to help us to understand. Jesus commands us to untie some things in our life, to loosen. And I'm going to call that donkeyology. These also, uh, there was also a group of people saying, why are we untying the donkey? There's always going to be somebody asking questions. There's always going to be somebody putting doubt in your mind. We're going to call those people detectives. They're always going to question you. They're always trying to get an explanation of things. When it comes down to something that, they're do, that they do, they, they don't want to bring that up. It tells you that there's too many detectives, even in the church. People trying to find stuff out about other people when they can't even deal with their own stuff about and and if they can't deal with their own stuff i call those people detectives what do you do if jesus tells you to untie some things it's it was very easy for the disciples to to raise questions but if we're not ever helping anybody and we're raising questions and never have a problem about asking somebody a question. I'm just reading through the text here. So you got donkeyology, you got detectives, but Jesus knew 
that they were going to ask these questions. He said, when they ask the questions, tell them that the Lord sent me. So you got to be so in tune with the word of God. Listen to me. When somebody asks you a question, you got to be able to respond with the word of God. So when people bother you, it's because that, or, or when people, they won't bother you because they're going to think that you're so religious. They're going to think that you lost your mind. They're going to think that, that, that you lost your marbles. When you, stop, when you start talking Bible, that's when people start backing up. Are you untying the donkey? Or why are you untying the donkey? Because the Lord needs it. They couldn't comprehend it. But if the Lord can use a donkey, think about what he can do with you and I. Think about what he is able to do with our lives. If we're willing to obey what God would have us to do, Jesus said, bring him to me. I have need of him. This is a God of the universe that has everything at his disposal who would humble himself and ride into town, not in a Mustang, but on a colt, on a, on a donkey, on the back of a donkey. Hallelujah. He rides in and everybody's excited. You know the scripture. They're crying, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. He is the deliverer. But let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. Excitement without enlightenment is terrible. Because people will get excited over anything. People will get excited and don't, and that don't mean that they're going to stay with you. People get excited, but they don't get enlightened. Because if they only knew who Jesus was, that would have been a whole different scenario. Because the same crowd that said Hosanna is the same crowd that called crucify or said crucify him. When you know who God is, listen to me, when you know who, who God is and what he's done in your life, when you know who you were and who he's made you and the things that he's done in your life, that makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. I don't want to be a Christian that's just brings excitement, but I'm going to need some enlightenment. I'm going to, I need to know who my Savior is. Every day I ask the Lord to, to show me something that I, that I didn't know before, something that I missed to be better than I've ever been in the past. Every day I ask God to open up my mind and to give me knowledge and revelation that, that, that I didn't have, to understanding, to bless me so that I can be a blessing to others. So the crowd shouted with excitement, but with no enlightenment. And that short-lived. Don't be tricked. Don't be deceived by people who pat you on the back and, and call your name to make you think that they're on your side. That short-lived. But give me someone that will stay with you through thick and thin when the troubles are overwhelming it. And they're right there and they're saying that I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray you through this. Because if they understood who he was, if they understood who this was, they would have known that it was the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm bringing this to a close. It's a short message today. But understand when you're a disciple, you got to obey orders even when you don't understand the occasion. God called you to do something. You don't have to understand. But as a disciple, you have to be obedient to the things of God. Most of us are not tied to a post, but we're tied to things. We're tied to people who keep us away from the call of God. Maybe you're listening. Maybe you're, 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 you're looking. Maybe God is speaking to your heart that you have to untie some things 
within your life and, and be a tool for the kingdom of God. Or maybe you're listening and God is challenging your heart with other things. I, I don't know what it is, but the word of God, the Bible said that the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. It's piercing to the, to the undividing soul and sunder. It knows the intent of the heart. So I believe God is ministering to people right now, right where they're at. We have an awesome God, and his name is Jesus. But be aware also that there's going to be detectives. They may not wear a badge. They might be, a matter of fact, they might be undercover. They're going to start asking questions that don't pertain to the things of God. They're detectives. That's how you know. So if you're here today and God is, or you're listening and you're viewing here today, it's a divine appointment. It's, it's not by mistake that maybe somebody send you a link, maybe somebody tagged you. But I believe and I know that God has a plan for you. He has a plan for your life. It's a plan. It's a perfect plan. It's for good and not for evil. It's, a, it's for a purpose. Listen, God touched my life almost 20 years ago. And he did something in me that I couldn't explain. But I know it was his spirit that he gave me. But also it was through the reading of scripture. That he's able to change someone and their whole outlook of life and give them a purpose and his name was Jesus and you're here and you know and you may be asking well pastor how, how, how do you know when it's time you know God is knocking at your door he's calling you you didn't choose him the Bible said that he chose you and he ordained you to bear fruit and fruit that should last and the great thing about that is when we do that, his word said that whatever we ask the Father in the name of Jesus, he will give it to you. I know I want to be on that side. And you're listening or you're viewing here today. It's not by chance that God calls your name. And if you're going to be a good disciple, you're going to have to endure hardship, the Bible says. A good disciple obeys God. Even when he don't understand. There may be things that you're going through that you don't understand. Right now, but God will bring clarity. He's not a God of confusion. And in closing, I want to close up with Mark. Chapter 11, verses 22 through 26. The Bible says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe, and you will receive them, and that you will have them. Verse 25 says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Verse 26 says, but if you don't forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And I want to leave you with this. Some things we don't understand. That was plain. These things we do understand. And these things we have to get right. Not only with the people of God, but the Bible says to let your light so shine that men would see your good works and glorify God in heaven. 
you're listening today and you don't know Jesus, you never had that personal experience, you've never asked Jesus Christ into your heart. It's a gift of salvation. It's a free gift. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You're here today and you're, you're, you're viewing, you're listening. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe. I believe that you died for me on that cross. But on that third day, you rose again and you live forever. I invite you into my heart. Wash me with your blood, with your precious blood. Forgive me my sins. I confess my sins to you. I repent, Lord. Take my old lifestyle. I don't want to be the same. I don't want to live the same, God. I ask you into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive me. Free me. The Bible says that if you said that, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And today, all the angels in heaven are rejoicing when one sinner that comes to repentance. And this is the second call. Maybe you're listening, and something happened in your life where you went astray. You stopped associating yourself with the people of God. You say, years ago when I turned my back on God. I look back and examine. And what happened was, God wasn't first anymore. The Bible says that if we seek the kingdom of God and the righteousness and His righteousness, Hallelujah. He'll provide. He'll meet your needs. All things will be added unto you. But God's got to be first. We take this time, this special time, as God is doing something in, in the heart of His people. He's bringing them back closer that he ha never has before. Maybe he's dealing with you and you're, and you're saying, well, I don't feel closer. Maybe I, I feel distant. Well, God is using that situation to bring you near. The Bible says that if we draw near to him, he'll draw near to us. And this is my prayer for you today, that you would get on your knees. You cry out to God. You ask him to refresh you, to, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He'll do just that. And I want to pray for, for the body. Maybe those of us are, are, are losing heart. Maybe we're worried about a job that we're going to lose or a job that we already lost. The Bible says that God is Jehovah Jireh. He's, he's our provider. He'll meet every need. Not because I said, because his word says it. He's a God that is faithful, he's true. He's always right on time. What the enemy intended for the bad, God's going to use it for the good. He calls the things that are not as though they were. Whatever the canker worm has stolen, God's going to give it to you back. He's going to replace. I want to thank you for, for listening. But before we go, I want to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for this special day, for this special occasion that you have blessed us with. I pray right now that you would pierce every heart that is listening. Every eye, God, that is on their phone, on their camera, on YouTube and Facebook. I pray, God, that you would deal with them right now. That you would bring them to their knees, God. I pray every chance that they get, Lord, that you would hearken to them, God. Give them an ear, Lord that they would hear. I pray right now, God, that they would lay down their life as a living sacrifice. That they, they would take this opportunity, God, as a servant, as a, as a steward, to be stewardship of this time, or to be a steward of this time. You're faithful. We can trust you, God. 
You're not like a man that you should like. And for that, we thank you. And we're careful to give you all the praise. And all the glory is yours. And all the saints of God say, amen and amen. God bless you until we meet again.